Hello everybody and welcome back as we read and pray together with our gospel for today, which is Palm Sunday. And you can see that our colour has changed. We're no longer purple, even though we're still in Lent. When you go to Mass today, you will see that the church and Father will be wearing red. I wonder why he's wearing red. Maybe you could turn to the grown-up next to you and have a think about it. What's red the colour of? I'm hearing some good answers. Well done if you said that red is the colour of blood. Red is a colour that we use in church when we're remembering somebody who gave their life out of love for God. And of course, the most important person who ever gave their life out of love was God himself, Jesus Christ. Because this week, we're starting to get ready for Easter. We're starting to get ready to remember and celebrate the fact that Jesus died on the cross for our sins so that he could rise to new life and bring us to new life too. So this is a very, very important week. So are you ready to listen very closely to what Jesus is going to tell us in the gospel? Oh, I'm seeing lots of nods. Brilliant. So what we're going to do, we're going to start by making ourselves very quiet and still inside. And we're going to say, Lord, may your word be on my mind and on my lips and in my heart. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. When they were near Jerusalem and had come in sight of Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, Go to the village facing you, and you will immediately find a tethered donkey and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you are to say, The master needs them and will send them back directly. This took place to fulfill the prophecy. Say to the daughter of Zion, look, your king comes to you. He is humble, he rides on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. So the disciples went out and did as Jesus had told them. They brought the donkey and the colt and laid their cloaks on their backs and he sat on them. Great crowds of people spread their cloaks on the road, while others were cutting branches from the trees and spreading them in this path. The crowds who went in front of him and those who followed him were all shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessings on him who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heavens. And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil. Who is this? People asked. And the crowds answered, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. What would you do if you got to meet a king? Hmm. I don't think anyone, any of us have ever met a king before, have we? But imagine if you did. Do you think you'd be very excited? Do you think you'd be a little bit scared and nervous? Would you be very happy? I'm sure you'd have lots of different emotions and reactions to meeting a king of a country. What if you met somebody who wasn't just the king of a country, but king of the whole world, of the whole universe? What do you think you'd do then? Well, did you know this is exactly what happens in today's gospel? The people in Jerusalem, as Jesus comes into the city of Jerusalem, realise that they are seeing the king of the whole world. Because what Jesus does is fulfilling a prophecy. There's this funny words there, fulfilling a prophecy. And what that means is that something that God promised he'd do in the Old Testament 
in the bit of the Bible that was written before Jesus came to live among us. Something that God promised in that bit of the Bible, Jesus is making come true. So in the Old Testament, God said, say to the daughter of Zion, that's the people of Israel, look, your king comes to you. He is humble. He rides on a donkey. And what's Jesus doing in this gospel? Is he driving into Jerusalem in a car? Is he cycling in on his, on his bicycle? I'm saying lots of shaking heads and lots of thumbs down. You're saying, no, he's not. He's riding in on a donkey, just like God said the king of Israel, God himself, would do. So Jesus is showing the people that he's God. He is the king of the whole universe. And the people are very excited to see him, aren't they? And this is where we get the name of today. Today is called Palm Sunday. And that's because the people were so excited to see Jesus, they were waving palm leaves, palm branches. And if you go to mass today and there is a procession, that's what you'll be doing. You'll be waving palm branches, just like the people. I wonder why we copy what the people in the gospel were doing. Why do you think we copy what they were doing when they were waving their branches? Why do you think? Maybe turn to the grown-up next to you and talk to them about it. Why do we copy what the people in the crowd in the gospel do? Well, I'm hearing some very good answers. And well done to those of you who are saying, well, it's because the crowd were welcoming Jesus. They were saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessings on him. They're welcoming him. Do we want to welcome Jesus? Can you put your hand up if you want to welcome Jesus? I'm seeing lots of hands going up. We all want to say, yes, Jesus, I welcome you into my life. I'm happy that you're here. But what I'm wondering is, do these crowds of people in Jerusalem, do they stay happy and excited and welcoming about Jesus? Or do they change their minds about Jesus? Mm. Oh, a lot of you are, are shouting at me that, yes, they changed their minds about Jesus. They decide, no, we don't like this king. He's not what we expected. He's not what we want. And that's how Jesus ends up being crucified, how he ends up being put to death. So the crowd changed their mind very quickly. They didn't stay welcoming Jesus. But you've just told me that you want to welcome Jesus. You want to praise him and say, Jesus, I want you to be part of my life. But it's very easy to change our minds, to turn away from Jesus and to say, no, I don't want you in my life anymore. Sometimes it's very easy to do that. So I think we should ask for God's help to always stay ready to welcome Jesus, to praise him and to love him. Shall we ask God for that help? Yes, I think we should. So what we can do now is we can make ourselves very quiet and still inside. And we can say, God, as we get ready to celebrate Easter and to remember your very sad death on the cross, that you died for our sins before you rose to new life, as we get ready to remember and celebrate all of this, we thank you for sending us your son, Jesus. We thank you for giving us such an amazing king who frees us from our sins. And we say, please God, please give us all the help that we need to keep on welcoming Jesus and praising Jesus and loving him. Give us all the help we need through the sacraments of your church that bring us your help, which we call your grace. And finally, God, we're very sorry for all the times when we haven't welcomed you, when we've turned away from you. And we ask for your help not to do these things again. And now we spend some time praying to God in our own words, in the silence of our hearts. And we finish our prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son 
and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you very much, everybody. God bless you all, and I will see you next week. Goodbye.